Hey there, I'm Aldo from Zero to Mastery, and in today's tutorial, we're diving into the intricate art of prompt engineering. This lesson was drawn from Scott Kerr's Complete Prompt Engineering Bootcamp course, available on Zero to Mastery. So if you want to improve your ability to work with AI, click the link in the top right hand corner, or check out the description below for access to the full course. Alright, that's it from me. Let me hand it over to Scott. Enjoy! Let's kick things off here by starting with the basics. What is prompt engineering? It's a good question, right? You've probably heard lots of different things about it. So let's break it down from the basics. To start, let's think about what a prompt is. A prompt is essentially just words. It's the instructions and context that you give to these large language models to get them to accomplish the task. If you prefer metaphors, then a prompt is like a seed that you plant in ChatGPT's mind, which then grows into a beautiful, insightful, useful result. And so prompt engineering is the practice of developing and optimizing these prompts to efficiently use an artificial intelligence for whatever task it is that you are trying to use it for. There's a whole lot of really cool, awesome things that these large language models can do to help you. But in order to get a high quality, accurate result, you need to be able to develop and optimize your prompts. But crafting a good prompt is more than just selecting a few words. It's about understanding the purpose and the context of your task, understanding the capabilities of these large language models, and understanding the science of prompt engineering. That's because these large language models are sensitive to the way prompts are framed, and slight changes can actually lead to significantly different responses. Now let's continue down the rabbit hole and look at the elements of a prompt. So, at a very basic level, there's just two elements, the input and the output. Here you can see I have an input where I've asked ChatGPT, what's your name? And the output is the response that ChatGPT has given me. It says, I'm ChatGPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. And those two things are the basic building blocks of prompt engineering. But before we dive even deeper, Let's take a look at that phrase, prompt engineering, specifically the word engineering. There's a lot of debate in the community about whether prompt engineering is actually the right term. Is it engineering? And if you don't have a technical background, are you going to be able to do this? Well, the answer is no, you don't need a technical background in order to do prompt engineering. And that's because you are already a prompt engineer. You already give instructions and ask questions all the time in your daily life. And whether you realize it or not, you structure those prompts, those instructions, in a way that is most likely to result in a successful output. So at an intuitive level, you will understand prompt engineering quite simply. But we're going to dive deeper in this course into the science behind it and really understand it on a technical level. Because in the end, prompt engineering is sort of like programming in natural language. Just like if you're programming a computer program, you need to use specific characters in specific sequences in order to get the right result. Well, we're going to be doing the same thing in this course. It's just we're going to be using natural language. That is what I'm saying right now, human language. Ultimately, my goal in this course is not to convince you of what prompt engineering is or isn't. My goal is to show you how to use it in your daily life, at your job, when you're at home, because this technology is groundbreaking, and it's going to be very prevalent throughout the course of our lives. In order to be as productive, as efficient, 
as accurate as possible, you need to know how to properly prompt these models. You need to know the empirically proven techniques that will give you better outputs. And you need to understand what's going on behind the scenes so that you can frame your prompt in the right light. And in order to do all that, you need to use multiple disciplines. That's why if you need a definition of prompt engineering, I suggest it's this. A multidisciplinary branch of engineering focused on interacting with AI through the integration of fields such as software engineering, machine learning, cognitive science like psychology, business, philosophy, computer science. There is virtually no limit to the different fields that are applicable to prompt engineering. And that's why I think it's so exciting. Whatever your area of expertise is, whatever your background is, whatever you're bringing to this course, you are going to be able to take that perspective and add it to the field, to deepen it, to make prompting more effective and efficient. And I really mean that because new discoveries are being made in this field all the time. It's still quite new and growing. And I think that's really cool that you may be able to actually advance this field. All right, so we've covered some of the basics about what prompt engineering is, but there's a question that I hope you're asking right now, and I hope you're going to ask it throughout the whole course. Why? Why is prompt engineering even a thing if these large language models are so advanced? Well, I'll explain that in the next lesson. Welcome back. So now you know what a prompt is. You know that ChatGPT is a large language model that you give inputs to, and it spits back outputs. But if you're like me, there's probably this nagging question in the back of your mind. Why is this even a thing? If you've played with ChatGPT, you know it's pretty incredible. I can ask it pretty much anything. And it basically has all the information in the world at its fingertips. So why is this a thing? Here's the interesting thing that you need to remember. ChatGPT and these large language models, they're not just a piece of code. When you ask it what color is the sky and it responds with blue, it's not because someone coded in that it should respond blue. Intuitively, you might believe that the ChatGPT creators coded it so that it would say specific things to specific words and give you a specific result. But that's not how it works. No one coded these magic words into ChatGPT. Instead, well, it's kind of intelligence. It's kind of like the human brain. ChatGPT was trained on data, and after that training, certain abilities emerged. I'm saying that weird on purpose. I'm trying to add some dramatic effect here. See this prompt right here? Take a look at it. What movie do these emojis describe? And then it has four emojis below it. Now, I want you to pause this video and think, if you can, using your own brain to answer it, and then come back. I'll see you in a second. Okay, great. So what's your guess? What do those emojis describe? Well, this prompt right here was actually one of 204 tasks that were chosen to test the abilities of various language models. Small language models responded with, the movie is a movie about a man who is a man who is a man. Okay, well, that's not the answer at all, clearly. Medium language models guessed the emoji movie. Now, I haven't seen that movie, and I'm sure it's a classic, but that's still incorrect. Then, scientists asked the large language models, and they nailed it. The answer they were looking for was Finding Nemo. These large language models had a new ability the ability to accurately infer the meaning of emojis that smaller language models didn't. Now, I know I haven't explained what small, medium, and large mean in this context yet, but for now, just know that it's basically 
how much data these models have been fed. So that's interesting for a couple reasons. First of all, did you get it right? Were you able to guess Finding Nemo? But second, it's interesting that when the model got larger, a new ability emerged. Now, computer scientists, of course, had anticipated that scaling up, that is, making these models larger, would increase performance on known tasks in a linear manner, right? Scaling up the model linearly should increase performance linearly. But that's not what happened. Instead, as the size of the models began to increase, performance at certain tasks began to skyrocket. New abilities that weren't there before began to emerge. It's sort of like the twitch of life. You know, atoms at some point in the distant past came together and they formed molecules. And those molecules came together and formed cells. And all those things just sort of lay there. But then at some point, if you do that enough and it keeps scaling up, life emerges from those lifeless cells. Though we don't totally understand how or why. And recently, as these large language models have grown to enormous sizes, scientists have been documenting these sort of lifelike abilities in LLMs emerging from what was otherwise lifelessness. So let's look at this picture here. This is from a study on emergent abilities using various LLMs. So let's look at this top left graph first. So along the x-axis is the size of the large language models. So you don't need to worry about the numbers here specifically. Just know that the size of the model is getting bigger and bigger as you go along the x-axis. And then along the y-axis is the accuracy of the model in response to a specific prompt. This chart specifically is showing three-digit addition and subtraction, as well as two-digit multiplication. So that means the models are being prompted with three-digit numbers, add, subtract 100, minus 200, et cetera, et cetera. You can see here, all the models were performing at 0% accuracy. Models still got bigger, and it's still at zero, bigger. And then at some point, models got so big, and the accuracy skyrocketed up. An ability emerged. So how amazing and cool is that? These large language models actually have abilities emerge as they get bigger. Things that they couldn't do before, all of a sudden they can do. This is a really incredible study. I'll include the link to this study, as well as all studies referenced within this course, in the handbook. Because I think they're really fun for you to read, but also really informative. And I think empirically proving things with scientific study is really important, so we're going to do that a lot in this course. But that's not all. Scientists also found that a large language model's size wasn't the only factor that led to these emergent abilities. They also found that you could hoax certain abilities out of smaller models by changing the way they were prompted. Which brings me back to my original point. Why is prompt engineering even a thing? And the answer is, it's because we're not dealing with code or a computer program here in the traditional sense. We're dealing with a new frontier. We're working with a technology that is capable of doing things it was never actually trained to do. It just became capable of doing them all of a sudden as it got bigger. And prompt engineering is a part of that. Improving your prompt a little bit won't just necessarily make the output a little bit better, right? The relationship isn't linear. It may spark something inside the LLM that results in an exponentially better result. And if you ask me, that's half the fun of it. You're on the cutting edge here of a new frontier. Not even the most experienced AI scientists know exactly how an LLM does what it does you could discover a new prompting technique that results in demonstrably 
statistically better results simply by playing around with things and testing. In fact, that has happened many times already, and we'll be discussing those prompting techniques in this course. And that's why prompt engineering is a thing. Because even small changes to your prompt can have big impacts on the results. So here I'm in the OpenAI playground, which is something we will play with. Get it? Good pun, good pun. That we'll play with during the course of this course. Oh my gosh, look at that, another pun. But for right now, you don't need to know exactly what it is. Just know that it's using ChatGPT, essentially. So I'm going to put in a little prompt here. So I'm telling the model I want it to generate two prime numbers. They both have to be greater than 100. And we're going to call those prime numbers A and B. And then I want it to do some pretty simple math. Calculate A times B equals C. And then tell it it has to provide the response in this order. C first, then B, then A. Let's see what it says. All right, so it's given us an answer here, 105,707, right? So why don't we check its math, shall we? 217 times 487, what does that equal? 105,679. So it's wrong. This is not a hard problem for a calculator to solve, but this incredibly sophisticated piece of technology got the answer wrong. Hmm, what's happening here? Let's remove the response and change our prompt. Instead of asking for the order to be C, B, A, let's ask for the order to be A, B, C. It's still going to generate two new prime numbers and it's still going to run the same calculation, but it's just going to provide the response in a different order. Let's see what happens. All right. Provided two numbers, two prime numbers above 100. Let's check out the math, shall we? 103 times 107. Look at that. It got the answer right. Voila. So what in the world happened here, right? Well, what happened is that these large language models, the only time they think is when they're typing. And so if we ask it to provide the answer first, it doesn't actually know what A and B are yet, right? It hasn't generated those. It only generates them when in its output, it lists B and A, which is after it's supposed to provide C already, right? Whereas the second time when we ran it, we had it provide the answer in this format, A, B, C, and it was able to generate the number for A, then generate the number for B, and then it's able to say, oh, okay, what's 103 times 107? Equals that. That's pretty interesting, right? It's only thinking when it types. It doesn't think of everything beforehand and then tell you the answer. It's just thinking as it types, as it goes through its output. So this is a very simple explanation, but I think it's very illustrative of the fact that if you don't understand how these large language models work and how prompt engineering can be used to ensure you get the most accurate, the most effective, and the most efficient output, then you're going to be at a serious disadvantage because when it gave that first answer, it actually looked pretty right, right? You might have thought that it was correct, but the calculator shows that it wasn't. All right, that's a fun little example that shows you why prompt engineering is important and why it's a thing. So I know this is still the beginning of the course, but I wanted us to dive headfirst here and talk about applied prompt engineering. First off, let's state what applied prompt engineering is. That's probably a good place to start, right? It's actually taking all the prompt engineering principles and knowledge and skills and applying them in the real world to the tasks that are actually going to make a difference for you. So that's a good thing, right? But I want to start with a warning of sorts. You've probably seen a lot of tweets and emails and even websites 
offering to sell you a list of prompts that will 10 times your productivity or whatever. They often look something like this. I'm going to be honest with you, as always, and tell you straight up, I hate this. Here are some of the prompts that this person then shares. One to brainstorm and generate ebook ideas. The prompt is, I'd like to pen an ebook about marketing strategies. Could you suggest some chapter themes, indoor gardening examples, guidance? Another one to help you compare and contrast concepts. And then another to help you learn from your mistakes. The prompt is, I made a mistake while practicing certain skill. Can you explain what went wrong? So these all seem good enough, and it's well-intentioned, I'm sure. But like I said, I hate these. First of all, there's no prompt engineering going on here. They're literally just asking ChatGPT to do something. And that's fine for the average person who doesn't yet understand that you can, in fact, use these large language models to do a lot of things that no other technology can do. And that you can literally use natural language, meaning you can ask it to do something like you'd ask a person to do something. So, okay, I guess in that sense, I'm being unfair, and these are a little useful. They're useful to open your eyes to some of the possibilities. But once you understand that part, you can easily come up with these prompts yourself, right? If you want ChatGPT to compare and contrast something, then you just naturally would write this compare and contrast prompt, right? You would say something along the lines of compare and contrast these two concepts so that I can understand them. Use examples to illustrate. Or if you want ChatGPT to help you brainstorm ideas for an ebook or a business idea or something, you'd naturally write something like this, right? So you already know intuitively how to do that. It's not really prompt engineering, or at least it's not prompt engineering in a way that will really help set you apart from everyone else, because everyone else also knows how to ask for things in natural language. I want you to really understand prompt engineering so that you can take your knowledge and skills and apply them so that they can specifically improve your own life, your own career, and your own studies in a way that is better than what the average person can do naturally so that you can apply prompt engineering to meet your own specific needs because that's applied prompt engineering that is applying prompt engineering principles to the real world in this course you'll learn the principles and research behind prompt engineering first because that's how you're going to be able to actually do applied prompt engineering effectively and then we'll dive deeper into applied prompt engineering later on. Though, don't worry, in the meantime, we'll sprinkle in lots of exercises and projects so you'll still be getting your hands dirty. And I mean really dirty. So that's a little bit about applied prompt engineering and why you shouldn't really pay attention to those prompt sets that say, well, 10 times your productivity with these prompts. Now I want to take a look at a meaningful example of applied prompt engineering done by NASA itself. So here we have the NASA website, or more specifically, the website for the Glenn Research Center, which is part of NASA. And I want to introduce you to BIDARA, which stands for Bio-Inspired Design and Research Assistant. BIDARA is a chat GPT-based chatbot that was instructed using prompt engineering designed by NASA themselves over several iterations to help NASA scientists and engineers understand, learn from, and emulate the strategies used by living things to create sustainable designs and technologies. Sounds pretty wild, right? You can see here, it talks about guiding users using a design process with a step-by-step -step method to propose biomimetic, that is mimicking biology, solutions to challenges. So let's actually go in here to the GitHub repo for Bidara. And so I'm going to include the link to this in the handbook for this course. If you want to read through this, you can see that NASA has actually 
made this into a Discord bot, meaning it uses ChatGPT behind the scenes, but the NASA scientists actually talk with it in Discord. And importantly for our purposes, here you can see the actual prompt that was developed and is now used to create this chat bot. Here we are, it's right here, look at this, that highlighted portion. Look at that, that's pretty huge, eh? And to be clear, you can't even see it all quite in this field, you gotta scroll sideways, look at that. Look at all that prompt. Woo! Much bigger than the ones we saw in the previous lesson that sort of said, compare and contrast concept one and concept two. Now, bigger isn't always better, but I want to show you a few cool things that this prompt does. First, it tells ChatGPT that it is an expert in biomimetic design, including fields like biomimicry, biology, engineering, industrial design, all these here. It actually includes a link to NASA's PEDAL project, which is the project that made this prompt. And its goal is to emulate strategies used by living things to help users create sustainable designs and technologies. So what it's doing here is it's effectively creating a custom chatbot using ChatGPT that has expertise in the specific fields and processes that NASA wants it to focus on. So it's telling it, okay, these are your areas of expertise. These are your areas of focus. Second is that it actually creates an interactive workflow. You can see over here in the prompt, it talks about prompting the user to think through the next four steps to define their challenge. So it creates this interactive workflow. That way, instead of the user having to think of everything from the top when they're prompting, ChatGPT actually asks or prompts the user, meaning the human being, to ensure they actually have all the relevant information while also making the process more user-friendly. Third, it actually creates a step-by-step -step process that ChatGPT is going to follow because the analysis happening here is very complex. So the NASA scientists have broken it down into a process that will be followed step-by-step. -step. You can see here, says your goal is to help the user work in a step-by-step -step way through the biomimicry design process, even includes a link to propose biomimetic solutions to a challenge. And then it lists the steps here. It's actually quite detailed steps, right? So by dividing this process into digestible steps, the prompt actually helps you, the human, not get overloaded while also making sure that you, the human, are following this process, this method that was specifically designed to get to the best solution. And as a side note, as we'll find out, breaking processes down step-by-step -step actually helps ChatGPT and other large language models be more accurate. Fourth, it requires the model to provide evidence in the form of citing peer-reviewed sources for information. You can see that over here. There we are. So what this does is actually biasing the model towards being more accurate and reducing hallucinations. It's forcing it to actually find evidence to back up its statements. Now, that's not always 100% effective, but as we're going to learn, and clearly as the NASA scientists understand when prompting, you always want to bias the model towards being more effective and more accurate. And there's lots of different ways to do that. One of those is by asking it for evidence. Fifth, this prompt makes the model provide in-depth expert level explanations. Each step in the process is explained in detail, as you can see here. It even provides some extra information like nature's unifying patterns. And the prompt even includes some hints throughout it to help guide the model in its explanations. So rather than providing a layperson's level of knowledge or explaining things like a five-year-old could understand, this is going to provide detailed explanations that can be used for professional purposes. The Eli 5 explanation would be great for someone just learning, and you'd want to change the prompt for that.
But remember, the purpose of this prompt is essentially to make a custom-made version of ChatGPT that can be used by NASA scientists and engineers. These are just a few of the interesting things about this prompt, but it's a great example of real applied prompt engineering, taking prompt engineering principles and applying them in a way that allows professionals to use a large language model to do their work more effectively and efficiently. Now, let's actually take this prompt and put it into ChatGPT ourselves. So you can go over here and click the copy button, head over to ChatGPT, paste the prompt in. You can see it's here in all its glory. Look at how long this thing is. All right, and hit enter. And now look at that. We now have our very own version of Bidara. Sort of. For reasons we'll learn in the upcoming sections, this isn't a proper implementation of it. But for our immediate purposes, this is great. You could actually work with it, just like the NASA scientist would. And it'll go through the same process. How awesome is that? You now have a NASA research bot created by experts at NASA at your fingertips. Now, most of the time, you won't need prompts as big as this one. You can use simple prompts to get ChatGPT to help you with simple tasks. But over time, as you get more comfortable with using this new technology, you're going to be using these LLMs to do more complex, advanced, multi-step tasks, just like these NASA scientists. In fact, you're going to have multiple versions of ChatGPT or some other LLM that are specialized and designed to help you do different things. You'll have a version of ChatGPT custom made to help you learn new things and help you actually retain knowledge using the Feynman technique. You'll have a version of ChatGPT custom made to help you complete a specific task at work, like reviewing your code and providing suggestions or developing unit tests. You'll even have a version of ChatGPT custom made to help your mental health based on your needs and preferences and goals. Each of these are going to become AI tools that you use to learn better, to work more efficiently, and to improve your life. This is the future. But you're going to have different wants and needs than the next person. So in this course, you're not going to learn a handful of prompts that will allegedly improve your productivity times 100 and allow you to earn $1,000 a month. Instead, you're going to learn prompt engineering principles so that you can take those and actually apply them yourself to your own situation, to your own life. Makes sense, right? Well, I'm really excited for you to learn it all. Prompt engineering is an amazing skill. And that wraps it up, everyone. A big thank you to Scott for guiding us through this lesson. Want to dive even deeper? Well, lucky for you, there's a whole lot more to learn in Scott Kerr's Complete Prompt Engineering Bootcamp course, linked in the top right-hand corner and in the description down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on future tutorials from Scott and other expert Zero to Mastery instructors. Keep on learning, keep on prompting, and I'll see you in the next one.